Hi, it's Jan, and today what I thought I would do is tell you a story about something that happened to me when I was a little girl. This is extremely embarrassing, but I learned a lesson from it that I've carried with me throughout my life. And I think you might find yourself somehow relating to this and something that may have happened to you. When I was about 12 years old, I wanted to learn how to twirl the baton. I was fascinated by people who could do that. And I found a place where I could pay a quarter a week and be in a group of about 20 girls where a teacher taught them simultaneously. So I saved my babysitting money and I attended this class. And I learned the right hand twirl and the horizontal twist and I'm a really extremely focused person. So every night I came home and I practiced and I twirled day in and day out. And then what happened is that the same teacher taught two other girls private lessons and those two girls had come together and they wanted to add a person to their little team so they would have three because they thought they would have a better little um, choreography going if they could have three people. And so they came to the class of 20 and they looked at all of us who were twirling the baton and they selected who they thought was best, which was me. And I was thrilled because I really had nothing going on at 12 years old. We were extremely poor and this was just a godsend to me. So they picked me and we practiced routines together. And the very first thing that we were going to do is be on the Rockford, Illinois version of American Bandstand. Dick Clark had American Bandstand back then and we were in the Rockford, Illinois version of it and the local weatherman was the Dick Clark of that American Bandstand for Rockford. And so all the teenagers locally would come out and dance and then for the entertainment, rather than it being some band, it was going to be us three baton twirling girls, if you can imagine. So I practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and we were supposed to be wearing, you know, a certain little outfit and the baton that I had was green. It wasn't silver, it was green metallic. And to me that meant that it was cheap. And that's because we didn't have any money and I know that my mom got it at some kind of a discount store. And I did not want to go on that TV show with this baton because it sent a message, I thought, that it wasn't right, it wasn't up to par. So I set about trying to figure out how to get that green metallic paint off of that baton. And I scraped at it and I filed at it with a nail file and I did it with an SOS pad type of thing. And finally I figured out that if I put nail polish remover on it, then it would bring the paint right off. So I got it off, I took off both ends, got it all cleaned off. I remember running upstairs from the basement and telling my mom, oh my gosh, mom, it's silver, my baton is silver. She didn't really care, it really meant a lot to me. And so here I am the very next day. Now mind you, every single person that I knew was watching that show. It was a live show. So all of my friends, I had told them to tune in. I was going to be on Rockford Bandstand. And all of my grandparents, my aunts and uncles, cousins, everybody I knew was watching that show to see me twirl the baton. So the curtain opens up, all the local teenagers are sitting in the stands, music starts playing, and with the first flick of the wrist, the big ball flew off of my baton out into the audience. I can remember seeing one of the teenagers just ducking as it went by his head. I was devastated, as you can well imagine, because at that point I lost all control over the baton. It wouldn't twirl. The other two girls were on either side of me, throwing it under their leg, throwing it in the air, catching it, flipping it around, and I was just standing there, just not even being able to do anything for the longest four or five minutes of my entire life. After that, when it was over, of course, you know, I went home and I laid down on the bed and I cried and cried and cried. And my mom was sympathetic for not nearly long enough, but you know, she tried to give me some sympathy and I was, I wanted to crawl into a hole because everybody I knew was watching me. And I'll tell you what I learned from that lesson. And yes, it is embarrassing. It's extremely embarrassing. And I laugh inside at the same time. Sometimes I cry a little bit, but I never remember that every time as I was working my way up through the corporate politics at IBM and I was walking in nervously the very first time I was going to be giving a presentation to my boss's boss, I can remember looking down at my cup of coffee on the way into the office and just remembering back and saying, Jan, 
You can't be embarrassed more than you already were. Just remember the time when you twirled the baton and someday you'll laugh at laughing at yourself about this. And I can remember the first time that I ever walked out on stage in front of 10,000 people to speak. And I said to myself, Jan, you know, remember when you twirled the baton. I reflect back on that now and I learned some things. I learned that you can overcompensate when you're trying too hard. That it really didn't matter at all that I had taken that, you know, silver, made that baton silver or not. That didn't matter. What mattered is the energy I put into it and how I had worked with these girls and how good I had gotten, but I reflected on the wrong thing. I started focusing on the paint on the baton rather than on me and the value I had. And oftentimes we can do that in life. We start focusing on the wrong thing and we pay attention to the wrong detail. What you wanna do is get inside of yourself and start trusting who you are and what you've done and what you've accomplished and make that be your focus of attention, not some outside peripheral thing that you think is gonna make you be better. The suit, the outfit, the hairdo, that's not you. You is you inside and what you're putting forth in the effort that you're doing. That's a lesson, that's an embarrassing story. I hope you got something out of that today. Thanks so much for coming by my site. Bye.